Welcome to the new this week video for August 2nd. Got a small week this week compared to what we had for last week. And we're going to start it off with Kelly Thompson's Black Cloak, issue number six. And then our friend Tinian. Woo! The fourth. Um, we have Christopher Chaos, issue number two. And now there's going to be maybe eight, eight to ten people that's going to be really excited that this book is is coming out. Um, Marvel doesn't have the doesn't have the the license anymore, but Titan picked it up, and we have Conan the Barbarian issue number one. This is cover A. What a great cover to actually start this off with. Um, most other covers look better than this better than this cover, but this is what we wanted to go. They we wanted to start with cover A. Um, and like I said, eight to ten people right now are excited that this book that this book is coming out, and the rest probably don't care. But it's Conan. Now this is what the world should be excited about. I'm excited about it. I'm sure my friend Sensei Mark is, is excited about it. I didn't get to show it last week because we had shortages, but it's here. The world's most dangerous man, Count Dante, issue number two from Scout Comics. Check the old check the old ads in some of those old comics from the 70s. You'll see Count Dante, the most dangerous man in the world. He he knows he knows some moves that if he taught you, you would die. So he did him, so he did him, he turned his back and did him just so you wouldn't so you wouldn't see him. This guy, this this is the guy. And they got some fantastic advertisements in there too. What is this? Doctor Who made the shelf? Doctor Who Doomsday, issue number two. Had an overage. <laughs> I mean, I kind of, I've kind of liked this book. Feeder, issue three. It's been an okay book. I've enjoyed it. And there's some more uh, sorcery and, you know, barbarian stuff. Fire and Ice by Bill Willingham. Issue number one. Disney's Gargoyles, issue eight. Scott Snyder's got his, his Dark Spaces Good Deeds book out. And this is number three. See that this book just came out a couple weeks ago. But we've got another one. Grim number 12. And a book that seems like it should have been out, should have been out months ago. Hellboy and the BPRD, 1957. You know why this one isn't on time? Do you see Christopher Golden's name on here? No, you don't. When Christopher Golden writes a Hellboy book, it's out on time. That's that's why this one this one isn't. For all the Howard Shaken fans, all four of you out there in the world, hey kids, comics number five. Jimmy Robinson's Junk Rabbit number five. Kenny, it's a great day for you. Because we have My Little Pony issue number 15. And I have no idea what this is, but it looks weird enough, just weird enough to bring in. Nouns number one. Nouns of Noun Town, it's, it, it's called. Um, I I can't tell if it's a I can't tell if it's a kids book or what what it is. I have no idea. It was it's by Titan Comics. Um, I try to support most of this stuff, so I brought in a copy of Nouns from Noun Town. Don't know. It's the weirdest place on earth, though. And one of the guys who have for, who's forgotten how to write, Jason Aaron, Once Upon a Time at the End of the World, issue eight. Now, I don't know if this is any good because I haven't tried it. But I can tell you, most of the stuff he's, he's been writing lately, um, he, it, he doesn't look like a... It doesn't come across as a professional writer. It comes across as just someone who just streams some words together that it just tells total nonsense. So, I mean, I don't know if this book is, is here or not, but I've lost all faith in Jason Aaron. Order and Outrage, number four. 
some Jim Starlin action going on here with Rags Morales, two old school guys. Terry Moore's Pocket Girls, number nine. One of the Luna brothers, Jonathan. I don't know if this is the guy that beats up his other brother, or if this is the guy that got beat up. One of the, I, don't, I don't know who is who. But um, this is Quest, number one. And there's a few people in the world that's looking forward to this book. Could be someone that may even be... Could be even in this room right now. And I know my, my, my good friend Big Bry out in, out in um, Wisconsin used to be a big fan of this. Oh, we've got Robotech, Rick Hunter, number one. Rick Remenda is going to try to put out a book again. Hopefully it's better than the last crap that he put out. This is The Sacrificers, issue number one. I perused through this earlier, and oh, I guess I must have not opened up the right pages. I was going to say, I think there's more words in this than the than the last book that he put out that seemed to be wordless, but I have just opened up three, four, four pages in a row that I must have just missed because I was just looking through it. No words there. Some, um, you know, some huff, huff, huff. Some guy breathing heavy. Oh, some more no words there, yeah. I guess, I guess he phoned it in again, and he's just letting the artist tell the story. Must be nice to get paid all that money and not have to do much of anything. Here's a good book. Sins of Salt and Sea, number three, Ed Brisson. A little disappointed with the ending of the last series, the last issue, but we'll see, we'll see where it, we'll see where it goes. But I've, I've enjoyed the story until the very last page of the last issue. Spawn, number 344. And if you don't get enough of that, we get the Spawn Origins Collection, Volume 26. Star Trek, Deep Space Nine, The Dog of War, number five. And Star Trek Defiant, number six. Part of the Day of Blood series. And a book that no one seems to care about anymore, compared to what the first, the first series brought. I mean, then again, it took two years to put out five issues or six issues. We got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Last Ronin Lost Years, number five. And a book from a, a buddy Tynan again. World Tree, number one. The fourth printing. That's crazy. And that's what we have for the independents. And there are some great DC books out this week. We are going to start it off with, I mean, people should be buying two copies of this because this is the book. City Boy, number three. If you don't have one of these in your collection, you are missing out. Oh, maybe not. I'm getting a disgusted look from Buff right now. <laughs> Justice Society of America, number five. And let's swing back into the Night Terrors. Got Night Terrors Batman, number two. The Joker, number two. Poison Ivy, number two. And The Ravager, number two. Man, I wish there was some other dis distribution center that did DC besides Lunar Distribution. Man, I can't stand those guys. But got to deal, got to deal with those clowns. Anyways, we've got Peacemaker tries hard number four. This has been a really popular book. If you like the TV show, you'll like the book. And we've got the Sandman Universe special, the Sally one shot. Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? Number 123. And we're going to finish off DC with Steelworks. Number 3. Nothing exciting in that pile. Let's move to Marvel. See if anything gets more exciting. 
Get the Amazing Spider-Man Annual number one. Um, this should be more exciting, maybe more exciting what the Amazing Spider-Man is because that hasn't been very good lately. Um, it, ben, yeah, you know something? No, I'm not. I'm not even gonna try. It's it's not good. It's, um, but what what's gonna be good for three people? Astonishing Iceman number one. Captain America Sentinel Liberty Trade Paperback. Oops. Let's put that outside. <laughs> Doctor Strange number six. <laughs> that does not belong in the pile. <laughs> Someone's someone setting me up again for failure. Just Death of the Venomverse. Number one, Cullen Bunn's got a, got a book out for Marvel, which is kind of exciting. Um, and maybe he could be the guy that just kills the whole Venom verse, gets rid of them all. Um, and if we were all lucky in the world, there'll only be one Venom when it's all said and done. But we know that's not going to happen. Fantastic Four, number 10. Nice cover. I think there's. Every ep every issue has been a nice cover. I think they've been all Alex Ross stuff, so um, too bad the inside isn't the same. Magneto, number one. Uh, Dematis is... Uh, Dematis, uh, Dematis is... I don't know, the guy's been around forever. Um, he's writing it. Could be a good story. Nuck is uh, is drawing it. Not going to be a good artwork. But maybe the story can, off can offset the artwork. Moon Knight, number 26. Scarlet Witch number seven. Spider Man Miles Morales trade paperback. Trial by Spider. No, the volume one, I guess. God forbid you have more than four volumes of a trade before it goes back to number one, too. Star Wars Dr. Afri. For some people, Afra for the rest of the world. Volume six. Star Wars Dark Droids number one. Well, that's exciting. And that wasn't sarcasm. I was looking at it. I was looking at it yesterday. Star Wars Thrawn trade paperback. I think there's a there's a reprint of an out of they were out of print for a little while, but Thrawn's going to be big in Ahsoka, so bring that back in. Star Wars Yoda. I felt I said Star Wars a lot more than I said Batman this week. Number ten. Strange Academy, Miles Morales, number one, part one of three. Warlock Rebirth, number five. This was somewhat interesting. What If Dark Venom, number one. A lot of violence went on in this book. And we are going to finish it off. Whew, this is going to be awesome. An oversized issue, six dollars. Yep, six bucks for X Men Twenty Five. I mean, it doesn't get any better than this. To be able to pay more money for X Men, I mean, that's that's where all our hearts desire for. So there you have it. Um, very exciting week for books. Not really, but I mean, there's a couple cool things. We got Count Dante. That's all that matters. So uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.